Hey friends, I hope you're having a great day. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us in today's story. Today's story is probably one of the strangest sessions that I have done. Uh, why I say this was because after I negotiated with the spirit, uh, I would had an odd dream that some girl with cold ass hands tried to grab me from the behind. This has never happened before. I ha- I've had um, sessions where things try were tugging my shirt. I felt sessions that had people tugging at your feet, but um, this one was strange. So how it all started? A friend came to me asking for help. He recently got into a car crash about six months ago, and since then he has had constant nightmares. He also keeps getting sleep paralysis pretty often, maybe like two or three times a week. For those who don't know what sleep paralysis is, it's when you feel like you're half awake, half asleep. You feel a presence come and sit on top of you. Your body will go numb. You won't be able to move your body at all. Based off my experience, when this happened, it's usually a spiritual attachment on the person. So I had my wife prep my altar as we have that friend stay on the line. My wife lit up the uh, white candles as the glow from the candle began to fill the room. She then lights up the incense as the smoke began to build up. I started chanting and the first uh, place my guys took me to was the scene of a car accident. When I got there to the scene, I saw his whole body buried in the black asphalt with his head sticking out. Usually this happens when your spirit is down and stays there for a long period of time. They get buried into a hole. The longer that they've been there, the harder harder it is to get them out. If anyone has died in the area, then a person, the, 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 the person who died there will need a substitute and will usually take your spirit if you were in a similar situation like them. That's why there's some areas that we go to that people keep dying due to the same cause. Like some areas that people drown once a year. These are the things that kind of happen. So when this instance happened, we as shaman usually use a Jaws paper doll to substitute your spirit so that it ends that cycle of or cycle or karma or whatever you want to call it. However, in this case, um, this wasn't required because uh, nobody passed away in that area. But we did need to get him out of the ground because he was buried in. All of a sudden, as soon as I got there, after I saw that he was buried, the Tichu, or like I call it like a landlord, but um, he pops out and tells me that I won't be able to lift my friend's spirit up unless I pay for the damages that was caused by my friend. When accidents happen on the spiritual side, things get destroyed too. So the landlord wanted me to fix that first in order for me to be able to lift up my friend's spirit. He basically wanted 20 Joss paper bolts before I was able to lay hand on my friend. I then turn around and ask my friend, if anybody called his spirit back or who believed for him after the car accident, he responded, no. I then told him, during the car accident, it seems like you damaged a few things. I saw your spirit buried in the road and it's been a little bit over six months. I won't be able to raise you unless you agree to pay the landlord the 20 Josh paper boats. He then willingly agrees. I asked if uh, he had any Joss paper at home, but um, at this time he didn't. I usually keep a a, a stash or like um, like a pile of um, Joss paper bolts just in case of emer- emergencies like this. I had my wife burn twenty from my stash, and I told my friend that if everything gets better, then for him to bring me twenty Joss paper bolts, since I use twenty of mine, he then agrees. And I hand over, I I burn over the money, which is like handing it over on the spiritual side. 
<clears throat> I handed it to the landlord and used my guides to have to use their swords to break into the concrete so that we can lift them up. They plunged their swords into the concrete as the road began to crack. They rush over and pull them out of the hole. I take a spare back home and drop them off with his house guardians. When I got there, I checked to see if there were any bad spirits in the house and if there were any other issues. The first thing that popped out was this dark female figure. She had on a white gown with long dark hair that covered her face. She was hanging upside down on the right corner of his room, staring down at him. I asked my guides, how did she follow him home and what happened? They told me that during the incident, he was frightened and she grabbed a hold of him and followed him home. She would sometimes come into his dream and chase him. I then asked my friend if he saw any shadows or had any airy feelings in the room. He then answers, he doesn't see anything or sense anything. I then re-asked the uh, lady entity and then she answers, he's constantly sad and angry all the time. He has no father figure in his life. I'm just here to comfort him. I told her, I told her that the living and the dead cannot stay together. And if she doesn't leave, then I'll have to use force. She decides to leave, but uh, but I had a feeling that she wasn't happy leaving, or she wasn't willing, willingly leaving. So I figured um, she wanted some money. So I offer her six Joss paper boats if she decides to leave. She then seems happy about it and agrees to leave. I rechecked their house and there I saw their mom through plea or her spirit on the floor crying. I then asked her, hey, um, why are you crying? Her spirit responded, I'm so sad because my kids have no father figures in life. Their father left a long time ago, and now there's no one to love them. I then turned around and um, asked my friend um, if they had a father figure in their life, and they responded, no, um, their mom was uh, divorced. So I convinced their mom to get up because she still had sons and daughters to take care of and there's so many people surrounding her that love her even though there's no father figure in their life she should be happy and should have multiple reasons for still living on when she finally got up i told my guides to wash her or on a, at least on the spiritual side because um their spirit becomes weak once they are down. So when they get up, uh, what we usually do is uh, wash them to renew their energy. After all this, I secure their house and uh, make sure that everybody's spirit was present. And then um, I ended the session, set it f the time frame for the sleep paralysis to stop within three days. And I told him that if anything changes or if his symptoms come back, for him to let me know right away. <clears throat> so uh, we ended the session maybe around the evening. Later on that night, um, I had a odd dream that I was in um, a very dark forest. There was a girl right behind me that was slowly uh, sliding her hands between my armpit. As soon as I felt her cold fingers, I woke up and it was creepy and eerie. I told my guides instantly to capture whoever was trying to mess with us. I was pretty sure that it was related to the previous session that I did for my friend. Uh, Later on, um, the time that I captured her in the morning was around 3.30. So it was pretty early. Um, during that time, um, 
like uh, the newer generation shamans, uh, we can um, do things away from the altar. You don't have to be in front of the altar to be able to do sessions, but it would be better if uh, it's like heavier sessions. So um, that night, um, I woke up on my bed uh, from my bed, and um, I, I captured the lady around three thirty in the morning. And then, um, I, as soon as I threw her in that jail cell, um, to that girl, uh, she cried out, I think, uh, um, why didn't I lock her up? <clears throat> so, um, I just told my guys like, Hey, it's too early for this. Um, I'm not trying to deal with this. Uh, just throw her in, lock her up and we'll deal with it later when I wake up. So, um, fast forward to, um, about 11 a.m. I, fi- uh, I finally get the chance to, um, go check who it is. But, um, during that time, like, I totally blanked out and, um, and, I uh, forgot to ask who she was. So I just, um, went back to my jail cell and confronted her and basically told her if she comes back and I see her again or I catch her um for her not to regret because usually at that point then um you threaten to kill them so two hours later after i just released her as she walks off into the dusty road right my uh friend's sister calls me and tells me that hey um you know the my brother that you just did a session for he just got sat on again so i'm like what the heck we just barely um negotiated yesterday so it's kind of odd and kind of funny at the same time because um i didn't think that that girl in my dream would be uh associated with whoever sat on him but uh whoever i released uh apparently went back so uh, i told him that i'll check it out later on the evening later on that evening um I do all my shaman stuff like chants, guy, uh, like uh, chants, uh, light up incense and candles and stuff like that. And then um, as I was doing it, um, the first thing I went to do was uh, to check his house. So I uh, I checked his house. Um, apparently, the lady was still there. So this time uh, I captured her, um, caught out um, the w- the big witness or like the like gods. Uh, or at least that's the way I, I, I would think. Uh, if anybody knows any better, uh, feel free to correct me. But uh, there are three big major um, like guides or like gods. Uh, the first one is uh, the Thunder God, or um, or we call him Yo uh, Solo, Yo Sotsuva Solo, and then um, the second one would be. Um, the dragon god, which it would be Jatsu Jalo, and then uh, the third one would be uh, Mengzu Shuolo or Vama Shuolo. So that's like um, like like a Mong god or or like a Mong Chinese god or something like something along that lines. But yeah, uh, those are usually the three big witnesses you call when um, when you're negotiating and it doesn't go anywhere because. Um, these guys call the shots, but uh, I didn't call them all those three for this incident. Incident, incident. I ended up calling um, the Thunder God or uh, uh, Solo, and um, when he came, um, your vibes totally changed. Your whole body, um, you f- like you feel like a really strong presence, and um, I don't know about other shamans, but um, for me, when when I'm talking on someone's behalf, uh, my voice changes. It's odd, but um, it does happen. So when the Thunder God came, um, he basically told me to throw the entity in the dark hole because um, I, I gave him a breakdown of what happened, what the terms were, and everything. So he made the judgment to for me to throw them into the the dark hole or black hole once you get thrown in there uh you can't come back um so we as shamans um we don't make the judgments we're rather like 
the police or like attorneys.、Um, usually, when we do make a decision,、um, we still need to consult with the gods to make sure that we're not biased or anything like that. So I checked. I got that issue solved, and then I checked to see if there were any other issues. Then something else came up. So my guys showed me a forest. So I asked my friend, "Do you like to hunt?" And he answered, "No." They then showed me a rabbit and an insect, and it seemed like he was stepping on them on purpose. So I asked him again, "Are you sure you don't hunt?" He responded, "No, I don't go hunting." I then asked him, "You haven't killed anything on purpose, have you?" He then responds, "No." I ask my guides to clarify the reading again, and they show me some trees. And then he, my friend, answers, "I do go fishing a lot, though." The next thing that popped out was an aqueduct. In California, aqueducts pretty common for、uh, fishermen.、Um, it's like a little canal. Uh, some sometimes they're next to farms. He then mentions that he does fish a lot, and then I move forward to asking him if he ever did anything that he wasn't supposed to, for example, stealing fish, or like killing fish on purpose, things like that.、Uh, he denies all of it, but he says that he usually goes with a group of friends, and they might have done something similar. The reason why I was asking this was because, as soon as I saw the aqueduct, one of the landlords or the Singte Singte, he popped out and said, "Hey, um, this person that you're looking on the behalf for or doing a reading for, he took one of our people, and we want compensation." I then asked them how much they want, and they wanted a hundred joss paper bolts. And they had another condition, that this person could never return to that place to fish. He can go wherever he likes, but never to this place again. If he goes, then for him not to regret or yeah,、uh, like monk people say, it's gonna be too much. I asked my friend to see if he was okay with the terms. He agrees.、Uh, we set everything for fourteen days. Uh, for sleep paralysis to stop, this story pretty similar to the other story. Do、uh, damalu. If you haven't heard that one,、uh, I'll put a link in the description below.、Uh, feel free to check it out and let us know what you guys think. Anyways,、uh, if after 14 days the symptoms stop, then、um, our friend agrees to burn the hundred boats.、Uh, the lady goes. Has already been thrown in the black hole, so that's all good.、Uh, 14 days went by, and everything was fine ever since then.、Um, that sums it up for this story. I want to thank you guys all for tuning in and listening with us. If you guys have any stories that you would like to submit, please send us a email. Our email is in the bio below. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, and share so that we can grow our channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.